So if you're creating a package in Perl, a package uh, you're trying to package some code in Perl, you create a directory structure normally, and this is what it looks like. Where you have some directory, and in, within there there is a makefile pl or a build pl, either one or it can be both actually. Sometimes uh, you need one only one of them. That's basically the a script that will install your uh, module. It will also uh, be used to package up the module. There is also a, sometimes you can use a dist any. Sometimes you would use a dist any. That's a, a packager tool called distzilla is using. It's using this as the, the description of your packaging system, and then uh, it will use uh, the information within this file to generate a makefile pl. So in the end product, you will have the makefile pl only. Then you, you have the readme file, which is usually just uh, some description of what your code is uh, supposed to do. A changes file that's usually people put in there what has changed in the versions uh, between the versions. So if you're upgrading a, a module, it will be easy to, to see what uh, were the major changes. This is uh, can be seen also sometimes as a release notes, but uh, you put in all the changes through all the files. Manifest is a, a list of uh, files that should be included in your package. So it's used both when you're packaging the module so that Perl will know that the tool that is packaging it will know in exactly which files to include. So it won't include every file in this directory. There might be some uh, temporary files that you don't want to include and so on. Manifest lists the files. But it's also used when uh, the module is installed to, be, to check whether all the files are actually there in the package. This file can be maintained either manually, so you update it whenever you want to add the new file to the package or you want to remove a file, or sometimes some people uh, they use uh, an automatic uh, updating of this file. The way they do it, they have the manifest skip file, which describes in with uh, um, some kind of uh, simple regular expressions what um, files to exclude from the from the manifest p from the manifest file and then it will be able to generate this file the manifest file based on all the files that are in the record in the directory and skipping the ones that are matching the rules here then there are two files metayaml and metajson there are two formats yaml format and json format of some meta information about your module these files are normally generated automatically when you are packaging the module, so you don't have to maintain them. And they are there, so various automatic tools can extract information easily from your module. Then there is the lib directory, where the real important part is. So the modules, all your modules are sh should go into this lib directory. So for example, if you have a module called application double colon name, then it will be located in this place and then more modules can be here if you have scripts coming with uh, with this module then usually we put it in the script subdirectory and i'm using here slashes here but that's the same for windows so you would use just backslash uh, i'm just indicating what subdirectories are there so if you have a script uh, and it doesn't have to end with dot pl you have all the scripts you put in the script directory then there is a t directory in which there are going to be the unit test files and an xt directory that uh, uh, contains unit test files that should be executed by the maintainer of the script only so the t f the, the test scripts should be executed on the computer o on all computers so both when we are developing and when the module is installed but the xt are only uh, executed the xt uh, files tests are only executed when you're developing the code and then you might uh, want to include some examples example scripts uh, it's in the sample you put it in the sample directory or sometimes it's eg directory it, it, it doesn't have a strict rule this is not installed so what is uh, from all these things what is going to be installed is is what's in the in uh, the lib directory and um, you can tell the installer to also install various files from the script directory usually 
and then there are other directories uh, the, a share directory that's uh, usually used to include files extra files that you would like to to share and uh, you would like to them to be installed with the installation of the module and then if you're building a web application then uh, it probably has some kind of a templates or views uh, subdirectory and we'll talk about this uh, later how you can include them and how you can install them or or how things are working over there.